there. I'm Jason and this is Simplified Brewing. I don't know how this video is going to turn out, but we're going to give it a go and we're going to try to make ourselves a little uh, homebrew in the kitchen. So, so far what we've got going on, we've got all our wonderful ingredients out here. Uh, this is a Russian Imperial Stout Kit and I think this hopefully should be pretty easy for us to do today. And uh, we're going to try to get started. So right now uh, we've got our water heating up here. This is a four gallon brew pot that we have and uh, works out well here in the kitchen. So um, hopefully this will come out here pretty good. We've got our water heating up. We are going to go uh, steep our grains here real soon. So we want to get our water up between about 155 degrees. So this is where we're going to start and we're about hitting our mark right now. So I'm just using this little thermometer. Some brew pots could come uh, uh, with a thermometer attached there onto the side which is really really nice but if you don't have that uh, just a regular old uh, thermometer here works pretty good. So we are hitting our mark here. So we're going to get our grains ready. And thankfully these kits come with just about everything you need. So we've got our little grain bag here. And the unfortunate thing is that messes happen. So we're going to try to minimize that mess, but who knows. crushed black barley. Give ourselves our, that good dark color and Munich dark malt. dark color in here and what we're gonna do is soak this for about 20 minutes and we're gonna set ourselves a timer and in 20 minutes we'll be ready for our next step so uh, while we're kind of waiting here this is gonna be kind of a start stop video so we don't make this too long, just a little something for you all to see. And uh, you know there's a lot of different approaches to how you can uh, how you can do this. Some people uh, you know, like doing it right here on the stovetop. Um, gas ranges of course work a little bit better than a flat top here. So um, whatever you've got um, it's a really great thing. So um, I've been doing this on and off for over 10 years, so uh, we've got a lot of different things and I hope to make some more videos uh, that show us a bunch of different other uh, techniques and stuff. So um, this uh, really basic kind of a video, so um, trying to make everything approachable so we can get everything uh, get everything going here and uh, make something kind of enjoyable. So right now, no, we're steeping these grains and then uh, later on we're going to add in dry malt extract, liquid malt, uh, we've got some hops. Um, these wonderful things come with a great little instruction booklet so it can help you record everything, spells it all out, um, so it can be easy process. You don't have to uh, be intimidated by it. Uh, it's good to have a friend who knows how. So, uh, you know, I've made it uh, with some other people before and uh, made a really great beer. Um, you know, you may not always have all the equipment that you need and maybe, um, you know, you just try to got to 
figure out how it is that you are going to get past that, um, especially um, kind of when it comes to transferring stuff. Um, you know, it's like you're in the middle of it and you think, oh my gosh, I don't know, I don't have this, I need, I was told I need this thing, I don't have this thing, uh, improvise, and uh, no, it'll, it'll, it'll turn out pretty good. So um, I've made bad batches before, and uh, you know, that's just part of the process, it's part of the game, and you research and, and you learn. So um, this is an art, I think, more than a science, so um, you just kind of play around and see how it works. So we're going to let this go here for a little bit, and uh, once we're done here, we're going to move on to our next step here with our full boil, and we'll be back real soon. Okay, well, the grains are done after their 20 minutes steeping. So we pull it out, let it all drain. Be careful not to squeeze the bag. Just let it all drain out. Got a real nice dark color, so it's looking really good. And now we turn up the heat to get this up to a full boil. this step so we are done with that we're gonna let this heat up and then it's time to add in all this stuff it's gonna be really good what we're at right now is the hot side so um, cleanliness and sanitizing is kind of uh, not that important right now so we are going to enjoy all this and get this heated up and we'll be back and adding in all of our uh, little dry malt and our liquid malt and our hops and next step is on its way soon. Okay so this took a really long time to get this up to a boil but we are there now and it's time to start putting in all of our malts. We've got liquid malt and dry malt. And for this part, it's always good to have a helping hand. Uh, you may not always have that, but uh, when you are pouring all this stuff in, uh, it's always great to stir it up while you're doing it because that can cause scorching at the bottom. Uh, that'll really uh, affect with your flavors and stuff. So. Um, Luckily, I've got a wife who enjoys doing this too, so she's going to help us out. So we're going to start pouring some stuff in. So we're just going to stir and pour. This pour, first. Pour it. Doesn't matter really what order we are doing all this stuff in. We're just going to pour it. We start pouring it in. Stir it. Stir it around. Make sure everything gets dissolved. To keep it off the bottom. And we are looking really good. So. Pouring in our some liquid. See, this stuff is thick, syrupy stuff. So, I mean, if you can, use one hand to start pouring it in. Use the other to stir. But it's always good to have uh, someone else around here to help you out. Uh, you, know, you can do it by yourself, but if you can do this uh, kind of as a uh, team effort, it's pretty cool. And then we, we pour it careful, like these lids. Uh, you can get cut. Seen that happen before. Um, the 
the the liquid malt here is really thick. It's molassesy, uh, so you can uh, you can heat it up beforehand by sticking it uh, like in some hot water, running hot water over it. Spoon out the rest of the goodness that's in there. Um, this is there's a lot of volume here, so each one of these is. Uh, over three pounds. So we're adding in probably a good six and a half pounds of liquid malt here. And then we've got two pounds of dry malt. There's a lot, a lot of stuff to go in here. Can put that in there? Sure. And we still got our heat going. And we want to be careful. Want to watch how all this works because our volume is increasing here quite a bit here as well. So, what we want to make sure is that when this heats up, that we're not getting it up too high. This starts boiling up again. We got to be careful that it doesn't boil over. That's another. That's a really big thing. Is for the next hour, we need to watch this because we don't want this thing to boil over. If that happens, that can be really bad in that you're going to make yourself a big mess. Uh, I've totally done that before. So, um, you know, trial and error. Doesn't always work out the way that you that you want it to. These are the hops. They're, they smell wonderful. You just got to say that because they do. They do. Smell your hops. So the hops get in here. And you want to be careful. Because those hops is what's going to start foaming up. And you get all that going on. So watch everything you've got going. I'm going to use this and get that and out of there. Yeah. good old spatula to help get the rest of that out because you want to use that all up. You have it, they give it to you, use it. And again, if you heat it up, it helps it come out a little bit easier. Yeah, I know, stick it in some water, stick it in the windowsill. Don't put the can in the microwave. It's metal. Not a so good idea. Don't, don't do that. Uh, so this is, uh, this can be fun. You can make this, uh, if, you, if you have kids that can actually want to help, uh, our kids don't really help because, uh, well, they're younger. They're young, but uh, it can be fun. You know, it's like, it's a recipe, like anything else. Making a batch of cookies, but uh, they can't really enjoy it at the end, no. unfortunately. They like to help. They can put in the hops. So, but uh, you know, the problem is it, it's it's really hot. Plopping in something, smelling it, it's really good. You get these great aromas. The whole house is going to be smelling really good, like all this, all this great, uh, this great beer smell throughout the whole house. All the grains and everything. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty nice, and it tempts you to want to drink a beer. They say, you know, you're making home brew. Drink a home brew while you're doing it. Um, probably shouldn't is my advice, <laughs> simply because. You want to make sure that you're paying attention to what's going on. Uh, you know, yeah, you you can. Uh, one time we went over to a friend's house and we made a uh, Belgian triple, and we had ourselves like a little tasting while we were doing it. So you now this whole thing takes several hours. So uh, you know, you got yourself an afternoon to do this. Uh, you know, get some friends together and 
and you can uh, you you can you can make yourselves up some uh, some some pretty good beer. So this is uh, it's something that uh, you know it can it it brings people together. That's that's beer. That's just that's that's how it is, and it's fantastic. So we've got our hour timer started. We've got this going. Our volume after putting all this in here has gone up like a whole bunch. So we got to keep a close eye on this with how it's all working out, making sure like this will start foaming up uh, from all this stuff that we're putting in here, and all this uh, sciency wonderful magic is happening on the inside, and it, it's 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 going to be wonderful. So we are going to see what is going to happen in a little bit. So we are going to let this let this go. Make sure it's staying nice and hot. Make sure we don't make a giant mess and work on some sanitizing. So we'll come back in a little bit and see how everything's coming along. All right, so while we've got this boiling away, we need to think about sanitizing. Uh, so now this is coming up to a very important step here. So what we want to do is make sure that like all of the stuff going forward is going to be very clean and sanitized so we don't have to uh, worry about infection, keeping everything minimized so we can come out with a nice clean beer. So what we want to do, we're going to take a look at all this stuff. We've got different sanitizers that we have. Uh, one step, this stuff, uh, I like using like, stuff that is uh, no rinse sanitizer. And uh, this stuff is pretty good. It's uh, little granules and you mix that in uh, with, some, with some clean water and works out very well. Been using that for a lot of years. Uh, Star Sand, this stuff is great. It's another no rinse. Um, it foams up when it kind of gets sloshed around and mixed up, but uh, it's not something to worry about. Yeah, very safe, very clean. Really like this stuff. And then Sandy Clean is another really good one. This one does not foam up as much as the Star Sand. This, uh, this stuff is really good at cleaning out um, kegs, uh, hoses, beer lines, and stuff like that. So. Uh, you use some different products for what you need to. Um, there is OxyClean as well that you can uh, you can use with a lot of success. And the drawback to that one is having to uh, rinse afterwards after you you get your equipment, you scrub it out and clean it out really well. Then you have to do another little rinse there at the end uh, because that will really affect your beer, create a lot of off flavors. So uh, that's an important thing to, 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 to know about that as well as bleach. Not really recommended, but you can do it if you're really at options. So there's, there's things that you can do. There's a lot of good stuff out there. So use what you think is easiest to work with for you and uh, the best product that, uh, that you think you have. So we are cleaning, we got some stuff soaking here and sanitizing. One is our funnel. This is a really big funnel. Um, I like it. It's got this uh, extra bit here at the top which helps with the uh, with splashing, helps helps keep your, your messes down to a minimum. Um, comes with a filter. Filtering, this is going to be good uh, part for us here at the end while we are transferring this into our carboy because uh, a lot of our, our true uh, the hops and sediment and stuff can get uh, trapped in here. We want to try to keep it down to a minimum. You don't necessarily have to use it because that stuff will settle down, but um, it's good to help us maximizing our, our volume and our uh, you know, getting, uh, get, getting the most beer that we can out of this. So that's why uh, filters are good, but this can get gunked up really, really quickly with all of the, all, all the hops. We didn't use a lot of hops in this one, thankfully, so this one uh, hopefully will, will 
do the job for us. We've got a hydrometer. We're going to be using that one to help uh, measure our, uh, our, our gravity here. So after we get things cooled down, uh, we want to have that sanitized as well as the little cylinder that we will pour some of our beer into, drop the hydrometer in it, and we'll get our reading. Another thing that we're going to do, this is another option, is a refractometer. This thing's really cool. Uh, it's got a little viewer inside of it, and you, we've got a little pipette that we have sanitized, and we'll just place a couple little drops on here. And uh, we, can, we can take our gravity reading with that there as well. So uh, another very cool thing to use. We are also sanitizing our yeast packet. Yeast packet need to be sanitized. We're also going to sanitize a pair of scissors. What we're going to need to do is cut this little guy open when we are ready to pitch our yeast. So that'll be all ready to go. So we want to try to make sure that we have things set up. We want to sanitize our, uh, our airlocks uh, and, uh, and the carboys. So we have, uh, there's different options depending on what you like, what you want to use, what you have on hand. I like using um, this one, it's spigoted. It's got uh, this little valve here at the bottom, which makes it really easier to transfer. Uh, it's also very light. It's made out of plastic which uh, can get scratched up, but uh, I've been using these for a long time. This is the Big Mouth Bubbler, so it's got a really wide top on it, and you have um, your lid, and then put your bung in. Personally, I, I like this one a bunch. This also comes in glass, um, if, you, if you prefer that. This is more of a traditional carboy um, glass, heavy, but it works out really good. Glass is a wonderful product uh, in regards to brewing. Easy to clean, hard to get scratched. It's uh, just a, like a really good thing uh, for you to use. The drawback to it is this really narrow neck. And uh, while that's good in some cases, you kind of, maybe you do want that, but um, transferring and stuff makes things a little bit more difficult. Um, that's why I like having the spigot at the bottom because we can use that to help ourselves uh, with our transfers and everything. Uh, finally, you can also use it is a brewing bucket. These are good. It has side measurements on it so you can measure it out, you know exactly how much you have in there, and they come with these lids. The lids have a stopper already drilled onto the top of it, so you can just take your, your airlock, pop it in, and, and you know, you're, you're good. So um, reusable, you can use it for a lot of different applications and stuff, so um, that one's, that works really good. Uh, we have our airlocks, this is a little single piece airlock. And it has these little measurement lines on it, so you can put in a little bit of uh, the sanitized water in here. And so that way, when we have fermentation, uh, the gas can come up there, all the CO2 can, can, can escape, but then nothing bad can get back in there. Uh, another one is a three-piece airlock. Uh, works under the same principles. Um, I just prefer using these just uh, just kind of because it's just uh, a little bit more reliable and uh, that's what I like I like using you can also use a blow-off tube for that you just have some sanitized tubing and you stick that into uh, your your airlock and then the gas can escape through the tubing. That is great for higher gravity beers, which I may want to use in this one. It's a Russian Imperial, higher alcohol content, so there's a lot more fermentables. 
it'll be a lot more vigorous when uh, it's, it's sitting in there fermenting. So I had a bad encounter once, probably uh, a year or so ago, when I, uh, last time I made a Russian Imperial, where I had the regular three-piece airlock on it, and the fermentation in it was so vigorous that it just uh, just came right up there through the airlock and was uh, just not uh, not really a good time. It made a great big mess. I had it in my closet, and it it, it just stank for a long time. So uh, very very hard to clean up. So um, sometimes using that blow off tube into uh, no, a, a container of sanitizer would really help that out. So, um, you know, just more vigorous fermentations uh, might require a little something a little more beefier to, uh, to help that out. So our boil's done. We are going to get ready to cool this down. And to do that, we are going to be uh, putting it in the sink. So we're going we're gonna to have our sink. Got it stopped up. We're going to put some water in there. And we're going to do an ice bath. We're gonna stick it into some ice, get it cooled down to about 70 degrees, or at least as close as we can to it. it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, since you know this is we're just we're just kind of experimenting here a little bit. So we're gonna see how well that goes. There's a lot of other techniques out there which we can visit uh, at a later time. But for right now, we're gonna stick it in this ice bath uh, here in the sink. You can do it in a bathtub. You, um, I've got, uh, in my basement, I've, I've got a big uh, wash basin down there that I would like to fill that up with ice, and that works out really well too. Uh, if I was doing uh, a full boil, that's, uh, that's probably what I'll do. Uh, so maybe down the road we might see that. But for right now, we're here in the kitchen, and so we're just going to stick it in this ice bath. So uh, we are going to pop right back here in just a moment and see that. All right. Well, we've got our work cooled down. It was a little bit challenging. Didn't have a whole lot of ice, so uh, wasn't that easy. So uh, that's another one of those kind of got to improvise kind of uh, kind of times. So we used up what ice we had. We had our ice bath going in here, and uh, just tried to stir that word around so we can try to transfer. Uh, that heat out from the wort into the into our cold water, and that water got uh, a bit heated up because we're coming out from a boil, and just all that energy just just really heated up that water again. So what I ended up having to do was doing some uh, kind of like water exchanges. So uh, drained out the water, put in some fresh cold water, and just repeated that whole process again. Ended up doing that several times. Uh, but now uh, we are at a pretty successful place right now. So now we've got our work, we've got our carboy, got my funnel, and just going to now slowly try to pour this in and start start filling this up. Just gonna get this out of this water. We just gotta be careful. have some towels around if you can because we could have some spills and that'll make a mess especially here in the kitchen so like I was saying we have this filter in here so the filter is holding on to like the hops and this is everything kind of coagulates in there a little bit it really comes up that filter. So we're gonna stir it around a little bit with our mash paddle. If you have one of these plastic mash paddles, they work out really well. This is good for a full five gallon boil too. If you don't, uh, wooden spoon works out really good. Had to use that too before. Uh, or anything that's good for uh, for high temperatures. I think a stainless steel spoon, you could use that too. 
I've got one of those. Sometimes that works out good, other times not. You may not want to because you're worried about all that metal and stuff. So we are going to try to get this all transferred in here. It's good to just kind of keep some of that gunk out of there. So this is just going to be a bit of a process. Stir it up, pour some in, stir it up, pour some more in. And this is just a few gallons that we have going on here. So imagine if you had a full five gallons worth that you're trying to put in here. And we're probably not even at one. So I guess what we'll do, I'm going to keep working on this. And then when we are ready to top it off, uh, we'll, we'll come back. So in this bucket, we've got uh, the, rest of our, the rest of our water here. So we can bring up our whole batch up to five gallons, or at least as close as we can to it. So you want to have, now if we're doing two and a half gallons there in our boil, you need another two and a half gallons to help bring that up to the full volume. So we will come back, add in the rest of our water, and get ready to pitch our yeast. All right, so we've got our five gallons in here. We're just a little shy of it. And we've got our scissors sanitized. Sprinkle in our yeast packet. And then the rest of our sanitized equipment, we've got our lid, stopper, then the airlock. So we want to make sure we've got some sanitizer in our airlock. We've got all that on there. All right, now we wait and see. So hopefully this will start working out and shake her around a little bit. Oxygenating, I guess a little bit. Not an easy thing to do. Make sure we got our yeast suspended in there. And then figure out a good place for this stuff to go. Um, I stick mine in the basement um, just because it's a good temperature and uh, just stick it on a shelf. Got a, a little blackout curtain I put over it and then just gonna kind of keep an eye on it. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on this airlock and see how well this is working because once this yeast starts starts doing its job uh, this it's gonna start foaming up this krausen all this stuff is just gonna start growing in here and uh, you know getting all this all this CO2 out of the airlock so I uh, want to make sure we keep an eye on that because we might want to switch it over to that blow off too, and uh, depending on how vigorous our fermentation is. So fermentation, that's going to take us a couple of days, and hopefully you know, that's going uh, to be pretty good. And it's uh, middle of October right now, maybe we can get this ready by Halloween, we'll have to see. And Hopefully, you know, this is this has been a pretty good video. First time, so maybe next time might go a little bit better. We'll try again. I've got uh, another kit that we can that we can do. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently, and uh, we'll 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 see how that one goes. So uh, feedback is appreciated, and we will uh, check on this, see how well we're doing, keep everything updated. Hope we didn't screw it up. So, good beer and Godspeed. I hope this has been informative, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, hopefully see y'all again soon.